It's just after 3 p.m. <laughs> December 23rd, 2020. Now, I have just stepped outside to take a look around, and actually the reason I came out here was because I, um, I needed to think something through. I wanted to think it al through aloud, and I want to think it through on tape. But that said, I think it would be a good idea for me to take a walk, just really cl peek across the street where I keep getting those indications of danger coming from. My heart's been bumping and we're doing weird, you know, they, palpitations. If what I'm actually having is palpitations, palpitations covers a really wide range of acrobatics that a person's heart does. If what I'm experiencing is palpitations, it includes popping, squeezing, racing, uh, dippity doo dying. I mean, come on. Uh, anyhow, um, my heart's been doing weird stuff all day. Um, I've had weird effects to my head, cognitive effects, flashing sense of flashing behind my eyelids, all kinds of crazy, scary stuff. Um, some weird mix-ups, um, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, this kind of stuff, these effects, direct effects to my brain have just been, like, constant for the past three years. And scary as hell. Like, you know, I value my body. I value my brain. I value, but, you know, I realize that, of course, um, a lot of the people doing this to me do not value me my body or my brain and quite the opposite so very scary situation but my indications that I'm getting is that this may be an antenna based attack and it might possibly be coming from now in the past I've gotten indications there have been dangerous attacks coming from the locks heating and cooling this time it seems to be maybe it's coming from across the street or that's where I have to be concerned I'm gonna go I saw some really creepy stuff over there yesterday I'm gonna just peek back there today and see if I see anything different New car in the parking lot. This uh, this one's been here a couple weeks, but not very long at all. This car comes when there's a um, potentially fatal attack happening to somebody. That's when this car shows up. This car, I'm just going to point out because I heard it tap right before I almost walked by. I heard a tap on it. I'm just going to point out these, you know, the drone trail here. There's another, so there's the moon. There's another one right there. Um, you know, and how you can see that these are not steady trails going, I mean, sometimes they are, but in this case, it's like little puffs of smoke, right? Like George Harrison said, puff of smoke knocked me out in his final album before he died of, you know, lung and brain cancer, which was given to him simultaneously. He didn't have, I really don't believe he or Gary had cancer that spread from lungs to brain. I think they were just beamed, assassinated with, you know, multiple assaults. Or it's a cycle of assaults. You know, they hit one part, they hit the other part, they're just waiting for the, the part of you that's going to go first. But then they'll just keep hitting you until you're dead. The pumpkins. There's the bottom of a broken, broken bottom of a glass bottle someone just randomly left on the sidewalk here. There's an airplane right there. It's directly above that telephone pole, flying towards the little puffs of puffs, the white puffs. There's a um, dark gray car backing up right now in front of this white car. Yesterday, I saw these two white cars that looked almost identical parked here. This was one of them, and the other one was a Ford in front of it with a dealer plate, and then these. Um, pair of uh, black pants and a black and gray plaid shirt, one each next to each car, uh, and I was having all these dreams. So um, I believe that antenna right there is the antenna of concern. There may be others, so it's the antenna, you can see it. In some ways, I kind of feel like I should at some point summarize the things that I've managed to do um, in these recent years since I've gotten, I mean, even getting together with Chris himself, uh, you know, considering it appears that there were two of us that were supposed to find each other in the world. Um, 
and solve the problem, you know, while being, you know, dealing with all this deception and um, misdirection and things like that. So I found the person I was supposed to find. I got together with him. I found out there was something going on. I found out that there was a secret code involved. I mean, I don't know how secret it is, but it was secret from us. Um, I, I was able to decode a lot of it. It took me a while because people kept trying to prevent me from understanding what's going on, right? It's like the, I do believe that this is the metaphor of the artichoke. So it's the layers of the artichoke. You catch on one meaning, but it's not the whole meaning because there's another meaning behind the meaning. There's another thing behind the thing. There's another thing behind the thing. I still don't know a lot, obviously. I feel like there's still way a lot missing in terms of um, the full understanding of what the heck is going on here. Um, and I don't know, one big thing is missing is I don't really know what other people know or don't know because nobody admits what they know, um, rarely, you know, you can only kind of just guess by who shows up, where, how, and under what circumstances. Um, and also people don't behave the way you expect them to behave. So family members might be, um, trying to bring about your demise. You know, family members that you thought were the ones who were supposed to care for you the most. That's really a bit confusing, and it's a bit confusing as to whether they're, you know, certain people, I still don't know, you know, whether certain people are actually trying to bring about my demise, or they're just going along with it. But the tendency has been for me to find out that people are more adversarial to me than I had thought. And that the idea that people are behaving out of fear, I mean, certainly I would think that that would be part of what's going on, but it's not as big a factor as I thought it was um, with certain people. So it's just, I've done, I've already accomplished quite a bit. Um, and then this whole, you know, there's this whole misdirection going on around quote-unquote mental health. I think the whole field of psychology was partly developed in such a way as to do this, so um, I never really know how much I should actually address this, because that's sort of a, a, an attempt at controlling the conversation. If you're constantly trying to push someone into defending the fact of whether they're mentally stable or not, and especially if you're not even presenting them personally with the evidence that you're trying to present other people with, they have to just guess at it. It becomes a very, yeah, you're basically just controlling the conversation. So. Um, I'm trying to avoid falling into lots of traps, that being one of them. Okay. So the reason I came out here is because um, a couple things. Um, first of all, I got hung up on this word cut out. So <clears throat> if I just was to look at this word, like, you know, decoding the letters as I understand them, C, U turn, T. O-U-T. So O-U-T means whole U-turn T, C, -t I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's not, that's not going to go anywhere. But how about just to cut somebody? I mean, to cut, you know, like Schneider or Taylor, and I apologize for, you know, my bad manicure. I lost, I don't know, I've got to get more, more manicure tools. Anyway, and I tend to chew my nails when I don't have a clippers. Um, to cut somebody is to assassinate them. Right, Schneider, Schneider is the same idea. Um, Taylor is probably the same idea. Anything that has to do with cutting. So I've, I've been getting lots and lots and lots of um, images of cloth being cut or the edges of cloth being cut and things like that. Um, I've been trying really hard to understand where the, the wealth, the cars, the homes, and all that stuff are coming from. Um, I know some of it's linked to murder, and I'm just trying to. I've been trying to understand why would somebody want to pay for murders. Um, and how many murders are actually going on. It seems to be, like, way more than I would have ever imagined in a million years. Um, and the ace in the hole for this are, are these radiofrequency-activated implants. If these things were being addressed directly, we would be able to save many, many, many lives. But I think there's a much bigger game going on in the background here, and I think a lot of it has to do with just basically, I mean, global control. Um... As long as, you know, a certain, you know, group of people can eliminate other people and not be held accountable, they can, you know, accomplish a lot of their goals without having to be, you know, having to justify any of it. So I think that's 
a lot of what's being fought for right here. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to focus on the blank page right now while I uh, talk. Okay, so... Um, Cut out, and I'm going to go back to the word cut out. So, I, because, because here's the thing about this is one of the reasons why it's taken me longer than it should have to understand things is because of the disinformation and the, and leaving certain imports of in, in, important parts of information out. I mean, like really important parts of information. Because what happens when you, you know, with a lot of types of knowledge is, you know, you learn something, right? And you establish something, and then you want to learn the next thing and you stair step up to the next thing based on what you've learned. And then you can continue to do that. But then if, but if something about this is fundamentally wrong, this whole thing can fall down or at least there's big holes in it. And all of a sudden you're kind of looking dumb because you're basing, you're basing a logical progression based on something that was false to begin with. So that's what disinformation does. Disinformation provides you with a, you know, disinformation. So uh, here's this fact, and here's this fact, and this is going on, and that's going on, and this is the other thing is going on. If you accept all of it, I mean, you have to try to use your critical thinking skills to decide is this person being honest or not, okay? And there's lots of ways that a person can fool you if you are under surveillance, because the, the primary way that I was fooled to begin with was these people are saying, I had this experience, and I had that experience, and I had this experience, and I'm going, that has to be true, because I've had all of these experiences. Well, they know I've had all these experiences, and they specifically want to fool me, you know, especially. They want to fool, maybe fool other people as well, but they really want to fool me. So I'm just taking them at their word, because I can vouch for the fact that I've had these same experiences, but they're, you know, they may or may not have these had these experiences, and they may, you know, maybe they did have some of them, you know, so then they're, they're mixing a bunch of good information and bad information, and you know, unless you're really, you know, discerning and really understand the whole way that disinformation works, or, you know, if you're also disingenuous, you can just say, see, she said that, and it's wrong, and so everything she says is wrong. Now, that's probably some kind of logical fallacy. Logic is really important here. Inductive logic, deductive logic, understanding, you know, what it means when somebody makes a logical error. I mean, I, you know, or, or an, uh, you know, um, comes to a wrong conclusion because they maybe had a bad piece of information or an important piece of information that was lacking. All of this stuff is stuff that I've been having to negotiate to the best of my ability. Um, cut out. I looked up on Wikipedia because that that's what I do. You know, that's the that's easiest go-to thing. And Wikipedia, I'm not saying Wikipedia is great all the time for everything, but for, you know, a lot of basic stuff... It's good, and it's interesting that this word is coming up again because this is, I think, one of the first um, concepts that I tried to make a video about. It was basically a concept in my dream, and the reason why it was of interest to in me a couple years ago is because um, I recognized a similarity between um, a dream that I had had referring to paper cutouts and a Nirvana song called Paper Cuts. Um, So, and I don't, I haven't gone back to that, so I don't really remember all the stuff I said about that. I was, you know, figuring out how to make videos. I was figuring out what the heck was going on. I was getting fried with frequency-based weapons. I was dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, so, I'm aware that there is disinformation on Wikipedia. I can think of about three, you know, a few, a few entries that pretty heavy-duty disinformation on Wikipedia. Um, what, you know, some, some of the entries are about people, some of the entries are about things like frequency-based technology, some of the times, you know, it is slightly remedied, sometimes it's not, sometimes there's, anyway, you know, so forth, it's just the way, the way things are. So, I looked up cutout, and cutout is a, a is apparently, you know, um, spy terminology. So just as far as, like, this whole spy stuff, right, I... I don't know what what is a spy. Is a spy a gen, uh, hereditary position? I mean, I figured that I'd, you know, be. A, I mean, I know whatever I figured I would be or not be was being influenced by outside, you know, all kinds of different sources, including frequency based, direct, you know, manipulations of my brain, which I'm, you know. I, I think people become, you become oddly okay with this because it just feels like part of it. It doesn't feel foreign to you. Um, but, 
but um, <clears throat> um, Chris is up in, in the room talking to me from inside the room and he's distracting me. Um, I'm going to try to um, get back to my focus here. Okay, so um, that, you know, is okay, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I went through a, um, you know, period where I was interested in spy novels. Was it Tony Hamilton or something when I was a teenager? You know, and things like that. But I've never been, like, it's never been like, I want to be a spy or I want to be into covert stuff. In fact, I've kind of been the opposite of that. And I think I've, that too could be by design because clearly part of my job is to actually bring truth forward. That seems to be a role that was given to me and it's a role that I accept. But um, it's obviously not something that a lot of people want to have happen because they, they're getting all kinds of benefits from status quo. And then there's other people who are really gotten very accustomed to the status quo. And there's other people that expect to get a big payoff um, and that believe that they'll be frustrated and just have, you know, uh, if, if, if um, I'm released from this state of captivity. And so, you know, there's lots of people who have been trained that when, you, you know, somebody is not working, you just cut them out. You just murder them but you do it in such a way so that you aren't held accountable. And so you just do it in certain ways. Um, so this is what they want to do to me, my daughter as well. Um, and, you know, they try to, I, I can see that they've very tried really hard to um, breed and groom compliance into both Chris's family line and my family line, you know, um, value systems of um, obedience and submission and, um, you know, strong lie about, uh, you know, I was taught to be very honest and law-abiding, and I'm not saying that everybody in my family is like that, but that's what, that's what their cover role was, cover was, and I think, I don't, I don't really know as much about Chris's family, um, I don't even know as much about my family, but, um, anyway, um, so it's sort of like, what is my identity, because I never walked around having a cover identity any more than, only to the extent that maybe I'd go on stage and I would bring out a different part of my personality as a performer. I, I enjoyed that. But as far as being deceptive about who I am, what I represent, what I believe, what I think, I've never wanted to be that way. I, I would hate to be that way. Um, I would not want to embrace that kind of life. I think it would be difficult um, and unpleasant. So... I didn't really ever expect that other people would be that way. Um, and nobody told me that people were that way. I mean, normally you would think if somebody, you know, was caring for another person and they knew that someone was deceptive and intended, had an ill intent, you would warn that person as much as you could and as hard as you could so that that person would be, you know, safe. Um, but that didn't happen with me. You know, I was encouraged to get together with people. Or in, if I was just encouraged to get away from people, it was often for false reasons. And I'd be like, well, why are you saying that? That's not even true, you know? You're crazy, but it's not, you know, something else is going on. So there's dealing with all of that stuff, okay? But as far as cutout goes, I think that the, I'm, I'm thinking now that the definition that I saw in, in Wikipedia is not the whole story. What Wikipedia said, as I said in an earlier video, was that a cutout, you know, because it doesn't really even make sense. That's another thing you have to work. If, some, if, if, if there's a word... It seems to mean something, but then it, someone tells you it means something else, but it doesn't really seem to fit. This is a big problem with the whole, you know, Oxford English Dictionary and etymologies, being lots of holes left in etymologies of words and things like that. Um, maybe, you, maybe I think I've learned, but you know, sometimes you forget that maybe there's another story here that's not that hasn't been brought forward. So what the Wikipedia said to my memory was a cutout. Okay, so um, I have a piece of information and <clears throat> let's see, let me see. So I don't do this a lot in real life so I have to it's hard for me to have a piece this is my piece of information right um, I am instructed you know if this is me I'm instructed to give this piece of information to you know this person over here I'm instructed by this person over here right he says give this to this person and another person over here says give this Take this information from this person and then give it to that person. 
And it says that, like, you know, I think especially before, you know, they had internet encryption and all that probably was a really big thing. So, um, I think what I understood was that these were cutouts, right? So that, um, you're the guy that's going to give this to him and you know who he is, kind of, and he knows who you are, kind of, and you're both dealing, you know, this is what you're dealing with here, but he doesn't know who this person is, and this person doesn't know who that person is, right? And maybe, I mean, not necessarily, but maybe, and maybe, no, you know, nobody in this level knows who, who this person is, you know? So, so there's a lot of missing links here. I mean, not missing links, but, you know, these people are, are, are involved in an activity, but they don't really know the full extent of what they're involved in. Um, these people who are the cutouts. So what happens when stuff gets problematic? Maybe the cutouts are eliminated. They're cut out. Maybe that's why they're called cutouts. So, when we're dealing with frequency-based mind control, what we're dealing with, and I'm, I'm just thinking through this right now. I haven't, like, like already figured all this out. I'm just, this is, I'm figuring it out right now. Um, I'm a person, and I've got radio frequency implants, and they're blah, 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 that, you know, people can hone in on with drones and um, antennas and handheld weapons with little antennas and uh, that's, that's, that actually is the reality, right? Uh, not just for me, but for many people. And so they can, they can affect different parts of my body, including my brain with, with these frequency based, you know, I don't know. These are, there's transmitters, receivers, transponders. I don't know all the technical stuff, but basically that's how it's working. But who's operating this stuff, right? I've seen just randos you know a couple times with these black boxes with antennas pointing them at me doing stuff to me with them is not pleasant i've actually seen these things they hold in their hands um i'm aware that some antennas like the antenna across the street is probably involved in this stuff this antenna still may be unregistered um and then there's antennas farther away i'm also aware that signals can bounce off of other objects right um, you know, so there's, and, and then there's lots of drones and there's swarms of drones, so they can be bouncing stuff off of each other, right? So, and there's these fire sprinklers in my, in my home that have devices in them that are, you know, I don't know, you know, that are, they have cameras, I know that, and so they're sending stuff, um, transmitting. So there's a lot of transmitters and receivers going on in the system, but my question is, okay, you know, it's about the operators, right? So if, 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 if I'm a person who's implanted and being controlled in various ways for various purposes by other people, unbeknownst to me, maybe beknownst to me or maybe unbeknownst to me, even if you know about it, what are you going to do about it if everybody's in deny, you know, denying, denying that it is happening at all? Um, maybe this guy right here has a device that he's using to affect me, right? But how about this guy? Maybe this person, I mean, in fact, almost certainly this person is implanted. My experience is everybody that's dealt with me in this way is also implanted. And I can tell in different ways because I'm familiar with the patterns. This guy is also being controlled by another guy. And it goes up. So I know some of the people who are controlling me, kind of. Um... Mike Payne, you know, is one of them, right? Obvious one. Um, he might be higher up, though, or, or um, I don't know exactly everybody. But it's hard for me to know. Like, when they come to me, because the information, a lot of the information I'm getting is through dreams and things. And, I mean, um, I'm pretty trust, trusting of the, dream, the information that I'm getting through dreams right now because um, most of the time it turns out to be good information, if, I'm under, if I understand it correctly. Um, so that's a matter of trusting where the information is coming from. The information that comes to me could be good or bad, um, but that particular type of information seems to be pretty good. But um, 
these people can do a lot of different things to you. They can send you across, you know, they can send you in harm's way very easily, very, very easily. So I'm not sure, there's probably some types of checks and balances built into this to make it so that if you're going to be sent into harm's way, um, certain people have decided that and agreed upon that. Um, but at the same time, because you have all these frequency devices coming from your body, I don't know what's to say there's, like I said, there's swarms of drones out there and they're linked to other people, you know, maybe somebody can, you know, do something bad to you. Um, if they can get away with it undetected, then, you know, it becomes a game, right? And you're, you're basically a playing piece on a chess, you know, on a, it's not even a chess board. I don't know what kind of it is, but it, it's more like a video game. Um even though you're actually a human being, but I think people start to learn how to dehumanize other people. That's part of this as well. And see them as just, you know, blips on a screen and things. So, um, but this is kind of like a cutout thing because this guy, you know, that's directly controlling me is being controlled by another person and that person is being controlled by another person. So I had a dream last night that suggested that our soon-to-be vice president, Kamala Harris, is being controlled by Barack Obama. I think that's what that dream suggested. Who's Barack Obama being controlled by, right? And I've been asking who's Mike Payne being controlled by. Um, how about my parents? My dad definitely has been, you know, assaulted with frequency-based weapons. Who's doing that? Is it Mike Payne? Is it somebody else? Um, and then there's this whole thing with um, these guys taking each other out. Who gives them the permission to do that? So th these are these are the questions I still have, but these people might also be cut out. So um, they've implanted a lot of people. I, but in this particular game, it's different. Okay, we'll call, I'll call it a game now, although I hate doing that. Um, it's different because this is not really like a nation-to-nation -nation spy situation. There's there's other types of rules around this that go back to like hundreds of years, I think, maybe, maybe even a thousand years, almost a thousand years, maybe not, maybe 500 years. Um, and yet they're being applied to this situation, this very high tech situation. So that's weird. And I think part of one of those rules has to do with people having immunity to certain things. So I think, um, people get immunity by getting really close to you soon right so there's a lot, all of this stuff gets thrown at you when you're a little kid before you even know what's going on in the world these people get to you they get to your parents they get to your grand they got to your grandparents they got to you know our, our great grandparents you know and made them think that you know certain types of behavior was virtuous that was going to end up being very detrimental to us in the end um so there's heavy duty grooming going on i mean grooming not just from ch childhood, but from on a multi-generational level. Um, but one of the things that seems to happen is somebody like Mike, who's my first boyfriend, because, you know, nobody told me who he was or what his intentions were or any of that. I had no clue. Um, I thought he was what he represented himself to be. He accumulated a lot of power that way, and I believe he also accumulated a lot of power by participating in assassinations. Um, or, you know, however you want to call it, fishing, you know, because there's a whole finance aspect of this too. People are making money um, through these things. So um, they, they gain trust because this is a criminal. I mean, I use the word criminal because that's really how it operates. It's the best way to describe it. It's the best, most succinct way to describe it. And it's operating outside the law. Um, it's involving damage, it's, uh, pro you know, damage to um, property, damage to human beings, murders, sex trafficking, um, physical assaults, um, corruption of systems. I mean, it's, it fits every possible definition of crime that you could possibly imagine. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's like, you know, other crime networks where, you know, you, by showing that you're willing to participate in serious crimes, and, and cover up or protect other people who participate in serious crimes, you gain, um, what's the word, juice, you gain trust, um, brownie points, however you want to put it, you gain um, 
you know, in video games, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're game, you game, you can climb up in the system. You become more and more powerful. So Mike Payne has become powerful in the system, very powerful. But Mike Payne is also implanted in being controlled by somebody. Um, a lot of, they're also, there's a, so much deception involved that the, one of the things that's a big deal is trying to find people that you would never imagine in a million years would be involved in something like this. They really seem to like school teachers, especially elementary school teachers. And there seems to be a thing for fifth grade school teachers, especially. Um, maybe that has to do with, you know, the child development, you know, they're getting kids in different developmental ages and things like that. Um, but because of the way this has kind of infested all of our systems, nobody is out there rooting this out and saying you shouldn't be doing that. Now, has it infested all of our systems, or is it just native to our systems? It might be a little bit of both. But yet it's still operating totally outside the law and in violation of the law, direct violation, in fact, trying to undermine the law, um, including the Constitution. And so by trying to undermine the Constitution, they're trying to, from my perspective, trying to under, undermine the United States. Um, and that's where this gets really interesting. I mean, it's one of the places where it gets really interesting because, you know, if I had to guess, I mean, like I already have been saying, if I go far past Mr. Self, my fifth grade teacher, I start seeing a lot of traces of the CIA. If I start looking at a lot of these things, I start seeing traces of the CIA. But yet there's all this corporate stuff involved also. And there's everyday people involved. There's school, you know, it's just weird as heck. It's not like these people are getting a paycheck from the CIA. But yet they're still somehow been working for the CIA, I think. And then I've been asking, well, who is the CIA working for? My concern is what this might be is sort of a coup from the inside. That the CIA you know, and associates have gotten really good at overthrowing governments. And wouldn't it be ironic if they just overthrew their own government and took over everything? That's what it kind of looks like to me is going on. Um, but I do know that there is, um, I don't know if that's, you know, for sure. That's, I'm making a little bit of a leap here and I'm missing a lot of information. But what I'm seeing is um, that there's a, a really big push right now to cut me out, right, to eliminate me, um, and why. Um, so there seems to be a lot of reasons that her people are giving. She's mentally defective. I'm not mentally defective. I really, truly am not mentally defective. I'm, I'm, I really think I'm probably in very good shape. I don't know how, but I think I, I really think I am. And I think, I think it has to do with, the, you know, the fact that I've actually done a lot of, you know, in fact, I mean, I don't, totally hate psychology. I just don't like the fact that it's been weaponized in this way and that there's so much deception involved. Um, I did a lot of psychological work. I did a lot of psychological reading. I went to a lot of counselors. I mean, I kind of feel bad about that because God knows what they were putting about me in my notes, in their notes. I never read those notes. But since then, I've started reading my psychological notes and it's they, they're saying things I never said. They're indicating all kinds of falsehoods about me in my psychological records. So if they're doing it now, there's a good chance they were doing it all along. Um, but I also read a lot about psychology. I studied a lot. I, you know, did a lot of soul searching, you know, which you can see in my journals. I thought hard about things. I thought about being a parent, you know. Being a parent can really help people um, focus on what's important in life. Um, trying to raise a, you know, a child that's going to help make the world a better place and all those kinds of things. So um, I think all of that has kept me pretty grounded overall. Um, so the, to say that I'm so psychologically damaged I need to be you know, wiped out lest I gain too much power is pretty disingenuous. And um, you either have to be pretty brainwashed or just faking it. I think, to say that you believe that. Or you've been exposed to a lot of really false information about me, which is totally possible because I don't know. This is not a court where, I, you know, the evidence is vetted and I get to cross-examine the witnesses and be presented with witnesses and evidence and all that, which is what it should be. I mean, if you really wanted to find out the truth about me, that's the way it should be done. Um, so the only other reason I can imagine that people would want to eliminate me, okay, they think I'm a criminal. I'm not. I have no crime record. 
Nobody's ever caught me in a crime. There's no evidence, I mean, that I know of that anybody has. If they, you know, if they had any real evidence that I was a criminal, that, you know, I would think that it would have been presented to me in some way. Um, so I'm not a criminal. I'm not mentally deficient. Um, not that being mentally deficient is a good reason to cut someone off, off the, place, the face of the planet, but I, you know, it's a certain type of thought process that people have. Um, I will admit that I am a female. Um, some people want to say that I'm homosexual and should be eliminated for that reason. Also a very ridiculous reason to eliminate somebody, but no, I'm not homosexual. Um, I hate to even say that because I don't think that should matter at all. But I am a female. That is true. I am a female. And there's nothing wrong with me. In fact, I think being a female is great. I think that actually makes me a strong person. Because I not only am I a female, but I was a single mother. I was a sole support of my daughter for a long time. Um, I didn't get child support. I didn't get a lot of support. I sought to protect my daughter from abusive situations. Even if it meant, you know, a lot of stress on me. I was not perfect. I made some choices that I regret. However, I do think that those were very manipulated situations, very manipulated situations. So I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up over it. Um, I think my daughter came through quite well, but my daughter is also suffering from this, all the same stuff. And it's very important to me to um, give her a chance in life, the, the chance that she deserves. And she's um, got great leadership skills. She's very intelligent. She's hardworking. She cares about the world um but i don't i don't think really any of that's really the concern i think this is a mostly about finance and control i think that's what this is about and these folks like their new cars and their new homes and the ones that maybe feel a little wrong about it it's coming through clearer and clearer that they don't really have a choice under the current shall we call it an administration and i don't mean the administration like the actual elected leaders or any of that. I mean, whatever is running this secret system here. Um, so they are in a position where they're just taking, taking it as it comes and just managing the best they can under the, the way things are because they don't have the ability to resist it. They don't have the ability to speak out about it and be safe. Um, and they're being forced to cover it up. And I think some people actually are very, very torn up about that. Um, but, you know, a lot of this is being, a lot of people's minds and attitudes and things like that are being affected with this direct frequency based mind control. As well as, you know, the carrot and the stick. The carrot and the stick is the big thing, too. There is also an aspect of wanting to cover up past crimes. Because there's some very big past crimes, and that may be part of the problem. You know, I, I, I've been speculating that that might be part of the problem with this whole Canada issue. Um, I mean, it wasn't just Canada, but I certainly have heard about some stuff in Canada. Um, but it's not just Canada, right? So, I... Okay. What happened was, after, you know, Chris's mom was clearly assassinated... Um, I wanted to show all the evidence that I had gotten messages about what was going to happen to her before it happened, right? And I want to put it all kind of together in one place to say, look, I know this is what happened. Uh, I want to know who did it and why. And I've gotten some information about who did it, and I'm a little bit of information about why. Um, But in the course of all that, while I was looking, I was looking for something that I had, I remember writing down about seeing Chris with blackened eyes, and then a couple days later she ends up in the hospital and falls out of bed and her eyes are blackened. Um, so that was one of the, you know, pieces, you know, where I was predicting these bad things that started to happen to her. Um, there's a lot of, there's other things. Anyway, so, so I was looking back for that, right, through my journals, and... I had been, you know, trying to go through things and catch things as quickly as possible, and there's some stuff that I had just kind of glossed over because I just didn't know. It didn't really make sense to me. And one was this thing here. Let's see. Guitar and Toxic linked to Secret Agent Man, an older song like Secret Agent. This one here. Usain Bolt. Got the name Usain Bolt. The sense of Nike. And then, a, like, a quote. 
possible link to murder of Walden. And then it looks like it says CIA here. I think that's what it says. So then I see this old man, you know, I see a vision of an old man with angry, evil features. So I had just glossed past that because there was so much stuff going on. Um, so when I was looking back for this thing with the darkened eyes, which I still haven't found, I thought, you know what, I should look, this is weird, what's murder of Walden mean? I should look it up, and I found out what it meant. Now, this is right after Chris's mom had been murdered. I thought, and what I found was um, all these pleas from the family of this 10-year-old boy who was killed in Chattanooga, Tennessee, or near Chad, you know, Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, to try to help solve this cold case. And they were reopening it, and they were going to involve the FBI, and they were really, really looking for tips and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I thought, you know what? I get all this information in my dreams. This came to me in a dream. Um, I see on TV all this stuff about... Um, you know, psychics. In fact, I had just seen, like, maybe just... A few days before uh, a missing child case similar to this and a psychic woman has a vision of where the body is and she tells the police and the police are like okay well I guess we could look here I mean why not um, and they find the, the child the, chi the body I thought well that woman probably was getting information like I do through frequency transmissions um, and I've seen other things where police actually listen to psychics. You know, people who are self I, I don't. I'm not a self-professed psychic, but I, I realize that I'm getting information, you could say, psychically. Um, it's not really what I would call it, though. I would call it telepathically or transmissions or whatever is what I would call it. But anyway, I'm getting information of different types that is good information. Um, so why not look into this? I could help this family, right? I could help this family maybe bring some peace because I'm, you know, I'm very, it'll help me take my mind off of this terrible thing that happened to us. And so I started to do that and things, I started to find stuff, but things also started to get weird. I kept forgetting about this little detail here, this CIA thing coming up in the middle of all of it. In fact, I didn't, I keep forgetting about it. It's just sometimes, sometimes when things are so weird or so scary, Usually when they're scary, honestly, my mind almost glosses them out because I do not want to think about the CIA being linked to the murder of a 10-year-old child in the year 2000. Now, I, I, haven't, I don't have any other information saying that they're involved other than just this little thing here. But Usain Bolt coming up in the same context, Nike coming up in the same context, and understanding, you know, the mind control thing um it doesn't it wouldn't surprise me i don't know if this video i'm looking at my video right now it says 4325 and um i don't know if my camera automatically turned this into two videos behind the scenes and i don't know it but just in case it didn't i'm gonna stop and restart and make sure i get everything saved too